In this video, we're going to talk about some tips and tricks for the PowerPoint 2016 certification exam. This test is going to be a little bit harder than you think it's going to be. Let me just go ahead and warn you now. Uh, Certiboard, they, they deserve an award because what they've done is they have done such a better job of writing these questions compared to 2013. And they've masked the task in the question. Instead of just coming out and saying, go ahead and apply an animation or a transition or whatever the step might be, they've kind of hidden it. They've masked the question in, or the task in the question. And you're going to have to read these questions carefully because uh, they're not going to just come in and say, apply the the fly-in animation and, and change the direction. They're just going to say, have the, the text fly in from top to bottom. And you're going to have to know animation and change direction. And then some of the questions that they ask are going to be those weird things that you can do, but you don't often do, or maybe it's a picture color or a gradient, or I don't know, but it's going to be things that you don't normally do in PowerPoint. And so you're going to need to be uh, familiar with the different settings and the different dialogue boxes that way you don't get tripped up on the test. Uh, just like the other certifications, uh, the core certifications, there's going to be seven projects. The projects are going to have anywhere from four to seven tasks for you to complete. You'll have 50 minutes to complete the entire uh, exam. You're probably going to see about 35 questions. Let me go ahead and warn you that first test, from my experience, is often the most difficult. And I think Certiport does that just to try and trip you up, get you a little bit flustered before you move on to the other six projects. Be mindful of that if you struggle on the first one. Don't get too upset, just keep going. And with that, if there is a question that, that trips you up, I wanna encourage you, mark it for review and move on. Do not waste a bunch of time on one question because you'll lose a bunch of time on that. And if there's time at the end, you can go back. You'll have the option to go through a list of all the questions. And so any of them that you've marked for review, if there's time, once you've completed the entire project, you can go back and look at those questions. I really want to caution you. Do not take this exam lightly. They have done a fantastic job of writing these questions. And if you take this exam lightly, you could walk away disappointed with your results. So please, please, please have a good foundation for the features of this program. Be comfortable navigating and working on things because I don't want you to be surprised when you take this exam. As we begin to talk about the exam, the first place I wanna begin is on this page here. This is the exam page that Microsoft created for the PowerPoint 2016 exam. And this is a very valuable resource for you because what it does is it breaks the exam into five different sections. These sections are where you're gonna be evaluated to see if you have the skills to earn the certification. And then under each of these five domains, it lists out specific skills that each domain covers. Maybe you already know some deficiencies you have in PowerPoint and skills that you struggle with. That's where I would begin. But if you're not sure, what I would do is just start popping out these domains and looking at the different parts that you'll be tested on. Like, for example, I'd be probably begin here if you're not sure where to start because it covers 30 to 35 percent of the overall exam. So start looking through this. Make sure you understand the different sections. Something great about this exam page is you already know what you're going to be tested on because they've already told you. So you shouldn't be surprised when you go to the exam and you see a question. You should already know in the back of your head. This is something I'm probably going to be asked. If you would like extra help for this exam, I have some books I would recommend. I'll go ahead and throw those in the description so that you can look at those books. As we continue to talk about this exam, I want to look here at Gmetrics because they do a fantastic job of simulating the testing environment. Just like in the real exam, you're going to have seven different projects to work through and I've noticed overall that my students have about 35 questions for the exam. Each of the seven projects carries anywhere from four to seven tasks that you're going to be asked to carry out. And as I look over the screen, you will be given an overview screen. It's not something you really need to pay a whole lot of attention to. So I would just gloss that over. This screen is very similar to what you would see on the certification exam but it is a little bit different. And one thing that you won't have the ability to do is to click this summary button, which shows you all seven projects and allows you to jump back and forth. You won't have the option to go back in this exam until you've seen all seven projects and there's still time. So as you're working through the exam, 
course, mark the ones you did complete it. And then any questions that you have, go ahead and mark that for review. That way you don't get hung up on one question. A lot of people spend too much time on questions they're not really sure about, and then they run out of time. My advice to my students always is if you're not immediately sure how to do this, mark it for review, move on. Don't waste any more time on that. From my experience, the most difficult part of this exam is the master slide. And I've created a short video on this. I'll go ahead and throw a card up for you to take a look at that. But to access that, what you wanna do is go to the view tab here at the top and then click in the master's view slide master. By default, PowerPoint brings you to the slide master for whichever layout you were on originally. The main master slide, I call it, the master slide that affects all of your slides is the very top one. So you'll wanna scroll all the way up if it's having you affect the entire presentation. And then the changes that you make here will affect the entire presentation. But if you just need to make changes to just one layout, you'll wanna do that to just those slide masters. And notice that as I hover, this one's for the title, this one's for title and content layout. I would encourage you to use the hover in the slide master because you wanna make sure you're making the changes to the correct slide. We'll go ahead and close out of this. We talked about the different layouts in the slide master. If I made changes in the master slide to the content and caption, if I click that, those changes would appear here based upon the layout selected. So keep that in the back of your mind. One of the things that makes this exam difficult is the wording of the questions. And Certipore has done such a fantastic job of masking what they actually want you to do in the exam. They're not going to see on the exam, select this text, apply the fly-in animation, change the direction, diagonal, left to right. They're going to say, have the text fly in diagonally, left to right. And you're going to have to know that's an animation and a change of direction. So you really got to be reading those questions carefully. And if you read a question and you're really not sure what they're asking you to do, start thinking about some of the PowerPoint features and some of the things that they do. Because maybe you can say, oh, I think this is this. If you're asked to apply a transition, they're probably going to say, have it run after such and such slide. For example, if I do this wipe slide, it's probably going to be between one and two just because I had the first slide selected. But something to note is if you're not sure, just go ahead and run the presentation. And if I click here, you know what? That one didn't run after. It ran before. And so, OK, that doesn't seem right. Let me go ahead and undo what I did. Select none for this presentation and go to two and select wipe. As we continue to talk about this exam, I wanted to go ahead and open up a different PowerPoint because we're going to talk about some things. On the exam, if it wants you to do a task to a specific slide, what it's going to do is reference the slide number or title. So if it said make these changes to the title slide, it would be this one right here. You would just click that and start making your changes. So be aware of that. I want to go ahead and talk about these shapes and it's not just shapes, it's pictures. It's a lot of different things. I feel like you really should be familiar with working with shapes and pictures. For example, this shape right here, if I click that, I get the drawing tools format tab. And anytime you select anything like a chart or a picture or a table, you're going to get special options at the top. So let's look at this format tab because in here I have shape styles. I have shape fill, shape outline. You could be asked to change the color of the shape. And so maybe I don't like that. I could select this red instead. Some other thing you should be familiar with as far as pictures and, and shapes is your alt text. Something that can be tricky to do is aligning the shapes on the page. And so you would definitely want to practice using the align here. So if you wanted to do middle, that looks good compared to if I had aligned center. If it doesn't look right, it's probably wrong. Undo what you did and try again. Something you could be asked to do is to group shapes or shapes with text or pictures with text. I would encourage you to know how to do that. It's simple enough to do if I select these two shapes here. There's a few ways to do this. What I'm going to do is just right click here and click group here. And now that's one. When, as I move them, as I make changes, it will apply to both of those. Let's go ahead and look at applying animations. I'm going to go ahead and select all of my stars here. And then I'm going to go ahead to the animation pane and I'm going to have fly in here. And if you look carefully, all of my shapes have one. That means that they're all going to appear at the same time. I might not want that on the exam. And so you should be familiar with the numbering here, because if I undo that and I select this and click fly in, and then I select this one and click fly in, notice that the numbers are changing from one, one, one to one, two, three. You should also be familiar with the animation pane here because maybe I don't want this second star 
to come in second. Maybe I want it to be first, and I can do that by just clicking and dragging here. We had mentioned this before about changing the effect options for an animation. Maybe I don't want this from bottom. Maybe I want it from bottom right. And notice I can change that. I also have more options to change paths if I click here under the more for animation. So be familiar with that. Something else that you should be familiar with when working with pictures or shapes is bringing them forward and backward. For example, if I select this red star here, if I right click and click send to back, it makes it the very last item in stacking order. If I right click here though and select bring forward, notice now it's in front of this green star. Let me do it again. And now it's in front of the star. So be familiar with bringing objects or pictures forward and backwards. Going back to this presentation, I wanna look at inserting slides from outline and reusing slides. Now there's a difference between the two. And if you incorrectly try and do the one, you're not gonna be able to find the file type that you're looking for. So let's go to the insert tab here at the top. You can also go to the home tab. We're gonna go ahead and click new slide and let's look at slides from outline. Now the text files that would be associated with slides from outline would be a Word document or a .docx or a text file .txt. Now there are a few other ones, but on the exam, those are the two that you're most likely gonna see. Again, if you chose incorrectly and maybe you said reuse slides, then you wouldn't see these files here. So this one right here is a rich text file. It's associated with Word. You'll probably see a Word icon on the file type on the actual exam. We'll go ahead and insert that. And what I want you to see for this is that it inserted after slide two. So whatever slide you're on, it will always place the slide or slides after the slide you have selected. Now let's look at reusing slides. Now the reason you would use reuse slides is that you're using it from a different PowerPoint. Open up our folder here. And as you see, we have a lot of PowerPoints here that we can use. These files will end in .pptx, and you have the little PowerPoint symbol here to help you see. As we're talking about inserting files and pictures and all that, I want you to note that on this exam, most of your content probably is not gonna come from the documents folder. You might see things from pictures or videos, so keep that in the back of your mind. You should be familiar with navigating through the different folders. We'll go ahead and open up this business camp presentation. When you're clicking through here, it'll tell you what it's called. Again, these titles are based upon the title of the slide. And so if it said Moss Workshop, you would select this one once and notice it placed that in the document. Something else to keep in the back of your mind if you're reusing slides is to keep the source formatting. So if I check that and watch what happens when I select this one this time, notice it kept that source formatting. We'll go ahead and close out of this. Some final things I want to talk about are in the file tab here at the top. You should be familiar with things like check issues. And so if you need to inspect the document for hidden properties or personal information, be familiar with this. You should also be familiar with metadata and inserting different tag types. But let's look at the export settings because you could be asked to do something like create an Adobe PDF, maybe create handouts. And so be familiar with these export settings. Should also be familiar with the print settings. And there's a lot in here. And so you really should look at the different settings because maybe you don't want to print all slides. Maybe you just want to print a selection from what you have selected or a custom range. Some other things you should note here is the collated versus uncollated. Collated would print the entire presentation and then move on to the next one if you had multiple printouts that you were doing, whereas uncollated would print the first slide for the amount that you want and then move on to two and then three. So keep that in mind. You have the color settings. Of course, if you're going to change from full page, maybe you wanna add notes or outline. You have a lot of things here, frame slides, scale to fit paper. You really should do some research in this section before you take the certification exam. It can be very helpful. Let's go ahead and talk about inserting audio and video and then formatting that within our presentation. I'm gonna start by inserting an audio file. I'm gonna go ahead and click this button right here in our content box. And I'm just gonna go ahead and insert the audio file for this. And over here, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, but this time I'm going to insert a video. Let's look at the audio first. When I click this, of course, I get the audio tools, format and playback tabs here at the top. For audio, I wouldn't expect to be using any of this on here, but you should still be familiar with it just in case you see that on the certification exam. But where I would focus my attention for this is here. You have some editing, you have some audio options. You very well could be asked questions in these groups. Who knows, you might be asked to change the volume, 
or maybe loop until stopped. Just be mindful of this. And then on the video, let's look at the format tab here at the top. You very well could be asked to put it into some type of frame here, maybe add some alt text, but most likely you're gonna be asked questions off the playback tab if you have a video question and you have the trim video and then you also have the video options. You know, a question that you probably saw a lot in Gmetrics was to change it from in click sequence to automatically or when clicked on. So again, be mindful of these options when working with video. Thank you for watching this video. My hope always as I create new content is that my viewers feel better able to carry out tasks in Microsoft. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. That way you get a notification when I release my next video. Do you have a suggestion on a video that I should make? Leave a comment below. Let me know what you want me to create. That way I can better help you.